Cliff, what is personal agency? Great question. This is one of my favorite topics. So personal agency is the ability to impact and change the world around you. There's a great video by Steve Jobs where he talks about how most people, you know, they're trained to go through life, not bash into the walls too much, like be a normal person. And what you don't realize is the world around you was built by people no smarter than you and I. And that's so important and so true. And when I was little, I thought that I could do whatever I wanted, right? I thought that I could be president, I could be a billionaire, I could be a pop star, I could win a Nobel Prize, I could invent something to the same degree as fire. And for most people, when they have such dreams, as they grow older, society tells them that those dreams are not true, that they can't actually do those things. But there's no reason for you to believe that narrative because you actually can do whatever the heck you want. And I just internalize this to my core and anything that I decide that I want to do, I just go ham on. I don't, I do not stop. I will put my shoulder down and break through walls, do whatever I need to, keep going over and over and over again until I achieve that thing that I want to do. And that is personal agency. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, all these people, the defining characteristic other than curiosity and intelligence is an unwavering self-belief and personal agency. And if I could do one thing to change the world, it's to give every single person in the world more personal agency so that people would look at themselves in the mirror in the morning and say, I'm awesome, I can do this. I can affect change in the world around me. And the world would be a much better place, a little bit more chaotic, but a much better place if everybody believed that they can do stuff and you can. You just gotta try and not give up. So often, a question I get a lot is, hey Cliff, I'm a 20 year old student, I'm in college, I have loans, I studied you know, biology or like not computer science, like literature. And I wanna be an entrepreneur, I'm excited about this. What do I do? How, how do I get into it? So the first thing you wanna do is build the muscle of building. How do you do that? Just build things. It doesn't matter what you build. Build a chair, build you know, a student council seat, build a club, just start making things. And ideally you wanna make products. If you wanna build a business, a product business, in my opinion, is vastly superior to a service business. In a service business, you sell your time. In a product business, you sell your product, which means you can supply an unlimited amount of the product to other people. So I was like, okay, I know I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to start building things. I built like 36 products when I was in college. I built the muscle of building. I learned how to recruit people. I learned how to design. I learned how to code. I learned how to manufacture. I learned how to close deals, how to sell, uh, how to build demand generation. I read all the books about the topic, 100 books a year. Some of them were fantasy and sci-fi books, but a lot of them were business books and books about economics and books about negotiation and books about you know any topic. And I just educated myself. And I learned way more from those books than I learned from classes I took about entrepreneurship. I took two classes about entrepreneurship. I highly recommend read books. You're gonna learn a lot more and just build projects. And I do recommend taking you know two, three computer science classes. It'll help you. If you build a really good piece of software, people can use your software without you being there. Now it's not only software, if you build a physical device, same thing, but it's just so much harder to build physical devices than pieces of software because you need tooling costs, you need manufacturing, software just moves much, much faster. And that just happens to be the easiest place to build products quickly that you don't need additional resources for that are really valuable and you can multiply them times 100, times 1,000, times a million, times 100 million without any friction, right? Because you can just download an app, download a website, download a Chrome extension. You don't need to make a new one in a you know, machine shop. So learn how to build stuff, learn how to recruit people, how to delegate, and then set a big vision. So now we're talking about problem selection. It's very difficult to choose what to work on because there's so many options. So how do you choose? Find the thing that you care about, that if you were not paid to do it, you would want to spend all your time on. When I was 22 years old, trying to figure out a business to build, I was doing all this research. I was trying to get good at computer science. I was trying to learn and read. And I had high friction in my learning experience and in my building experience because it was very hard for me to code, very hard for me to read because I am dyslexic. And so I started improving this tool that I built for myself because I did not want the rest of my life to look like me trying to do things with like a hundred pound vest on making me move slow. I wanted to move fast. So I invested in the tool to build faster. And that tool turned out to be the thing that was most logical for me to work on. Now, I wanted to build something that could not have been made a year ago technologically. And I wanted to build something that would bank on some sort of shift in consumer behavior, right? Around that time, deep learning started to get really good. And people for the first time were starting to use listening as a primary form of information intake. And I wanted to build a screen reader before as a product but I did not know how I could make something that was 10X, 100X better than what already existed. And when I saw this new technology coming out, deep learning, I realized that it could build something that was 100X better than what had been created before. So keep your eyes open for what is changing in the world because it takes as much energy to build a huge business 
as it takes to build a small one. And so if you're gonna spend all your time working anyway, build something big that has a real impact on the world that will be there for generations. And you know, read some books about it. Bob Iger's book, Ride of a Lifetime, Total Recall, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book. Like read books about people who build big things and get inspired to build big things yourself and just try a lot of different industries until you find the one that you're most excited about and then commit and don't stop. So here's the best thing that you can do to start developing your personal agency. Go to your notes file on your phone and write out three things that you want to do that you haven't done yet, that you are a little bit scared to do. Maybe it's asking for a raise. Maybe it's, you know, gaining a certain amount of muscle and post it to Instagram and tag me in it. And I'll give you back a comment on what I think that you can do to do that faster. And then next week, put another post of what you've done towards that goal. And by posting it, you're gonna keep yourself accountable and the rest of your network will ask you, hey, you said you were going to write a new song. You said you were going to message this person, email five people that you admire uh, who run companies. Did you do this? And then hopefully you did it and you'll say yes. But post that story, tag me in it, and I will try to uh, help you figure out how to do it. If you wanna learn more about personal agency, Below, I'll include a couple of links for Medium articles I wrote, and even more so, I gave a talk at Brown, it's like an hour long, about how to make decisions and how to find personal agency. The link is below. Uh, I'll include the link here too. Thanks for listening.